Um, very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining today's iTrain session on online learning strategies with G Suite for education. And today we are hosted by Wayne Lim, who is a Google certified trainer. So you will learn more on how to leverage G Suite for education tools to support online learning. So a quick reminder before the start of the presentations is uh, please opt to turn off the microphone and video camera during the presentation as uh, the video camera being on unfortunately um, damages the quality of the presentations at the moment. So uh, if you have any questions for the speaker, you can write them in the chat box on the top right hand side of the screen. So uh, I will test now if all of you can hear me and uh, then would be ideal if you could write in the chat box. Yes. Great. Thank you for the answers. So um, Wayne will be answering the questions during the presentation. So if you have any questions towards me, feel free to ask them in the chat box. So and also one more note during the presentation please do not opt to present now at the bottom right uh, at the bottom right hand side you can see the option to present now please do not do that during the presentation okay so i'll start quickly by introducing what is iCrane. so iCrane is supporting digital transformation in asia and we are the pioneers and leaders in tech learning and uh, at iTrain we believe in two core principles the power of technology to shape the future and help us build a better world and that the love of learning is the source of human ingenuity and well-being and our goal which is backed by government and academia is to fast track open businesses with the latest technology applications and know-how so these are some of the certifications that iTrain currently has that includes mobile development blockchain, data science, internet of things, artificial intelligence that is uh, within machine learning and deep learning, fintech, digital marketing, cybersecurity, and also Google for education. And uh, yes, most of the courses are also HRDF claimable. And these are some of the clients that we had the chance to work with and help them empower their businesses. As you can see, they're across many kind of uh, strategic sectors, either in finance, technology, or industry and manufacturing. So that is it from me today. And I give the floor back to Wayne. Thank you very much. Thanks, Felice. Um, just give me a minute and let me just share my screen. Unfortunately, we can't hear you very clearly today. Oh, and uh, another note, the recordings and presentations will be available upon you fill in a feedback form. So in the chat, I will include a link for the feedback and also you can register for tomorrow's session. Tomorrow we'll be having a session on Google Forms. So you'll have to fill out the Google form and uh, for the feedback, but also tomorrow you'll be able to learn more how to use Google Forms. So yes, I will include all of this information in the chat box. It is tomorrow at 2 p.m. I'm sorry, I think Liz, I think oh. this next session is gonna be on Thursday. Oh, okay, yeah. sorry about that, <laughs> then on Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, thank you for correcting me. And now we can hear you clearly. Okay, so please Wayne. Okay, cool. All right. Um, just want to make sure everybody can see my screen right now. If you can see my screen, just give me like a response, like yes. Cool. All right. So good afternoon, everyone. And once again, um, thanks for joining us 
again today for those of you who have already joined us yesterday and uh, for those of you who are actually new um, that is your first time today uh, welcome um, to this session to this webinar session for online learning strategy with G Suite for education so um, I'm Wayne and I'm the Google certified trainer uh, and I'll be the presenter for you today so yesterday we discussed about um, technology uh, for education, right? So we we spoke about having uh, make arrange our class through Google Calendar, and then we use Google Hangouts. So and of course we also discussed like a bunch of tools that allows you to use it for online learning, especially during this MCO period when everybody is not able to get out from the house so of course today um we're still gonna learn very similar things but we, we we're gonna have new app adding in so which is google uh, classroom and also google tasks and gmail so you might be wondering like so i have been using gmail for quite some time so what what else do i need to learn so you'll be surprised so some of you um May get to see new things today okay so i promise you after this class um you'll be having some new knowledge all right so uh, let's take a look at the traditional communication and engagement so uh like for those of you who have joined our session yesterday we talked about traditional way of doing group work or assignment in the university or in the school so today we're going to focus more on the communication part okay um, so most of the communication usually uh, is being done through group group chat especially when we want to talk to multiple people multiple parties such as like uh you know when we have a uh, we, we want to discuss something with our department so we would actually create a group chat in whatsapp especially um, and we will just put all the ideas into that group or sometimes we create facebook group okay or maybe some of you here uh, you might be actually using other apps or other platform to for discussion so uh just like what we mentioned yesterday it's very hard for us to keep track of the discussion so mm -hmm. and usually um, when we want to schedule for a meeting or a discussion with other people uh, we will actually send them like whatsapp message and ask each of them hey are you available tomorrow at two okay so that's like the normal way that we use that, that we actually do it so uh which will actually cause a problem which the time matching problem so sometimes you may be free at two and your team member may be actually free at three so uh that could be a problem and it would actually cause like long communication and at the end of the day you would not be able to schedule for a meeting because uh you just spend all your time on just uh like asking about time for every from everybody right so um and most of the people they actually prefer face-to-face -face meeting because you can actually communicate better okay are you guys do you guys agree with me so okay for my session don't be shy to actually share your thoughts okay let's say when i'm talking you feel like hey um when i do have some idea i would like to share with everybody so just type in your idea under the chat session so that i can see you and other people can actually learn more from you as well okay just take it as a chance for us to actually learn from each other so most of us we normally would prefer face to face okay we would be doing like um like Sometimes, I, for me, I would actually say when somebody wants to actually have a meeting with me, I would say, hey, let's meet up at your office, or at my office, or even like at a coffee shop. So let's have a face-to-face -face meeting so that you can see me, I can see you, and I can show you like some content that I've done, and I would like to have some brainstorming session while having our coffee. So it's cool and it's easy, okay? But when we're having... Uh, some restriction like now having MCO 
so we are not able to meet face to face so we need to keep like a distance so how is it how can it be done so here comes uh we have uh tools we have technology to actually help us and today we're going to focus pretty much on not just uh, communication among your colleagues among your co-worker but also among in between you and your students so especially when you're not able to see them how are you going to communicate with them how are you going to uh, tell them some message or how are they going to contact you on the same platform <clears throat> okay so Let's look at engagement with G Suite for education. So the most basic way, the easiest way is to actually get it done through Gmail. Okay, so to get it done through Gmail. So we just drop an email and they can actually read anytime they want. Or even we use like Google Hangout uh, messaging app to actually just send them a message. So do you guys know that you can actually add a task okay into your google task and calendar and set a reminder before uh you know before you actually forget about it so it's like i'm pretty sure like all of you here okay um sometimes you'll be receiving an email saying from your superior for example hey um hi lecturers i will need you guys to submit your uh report your result report from uh for the student midterm so um, that's considered as a task because you need to submit a report, okay, by this date. So how do you actually ensure that you would not forget about it? So in real life, normally what I used to do before I started to use Google, I used a sticky note, okay? I just write it on my sticky note and I just stick it on a wall, I stick it on anywhere, which is actually visible for me. But right now, what I do is that while I'm reading my Gmail, while I'm reading, reading my email, I just add a task directly into my Google Task and Calendar, okay? Don't worry about that. I will show you guys how to do it and you guys can actually follow along, okay? And the next thing is, so we earlier we talked about time matching problem, okay? It could be challenging when we have, when we're going to have like a, department or team discussion like up to 20 people and it could be challenging for us to match everyone else at everybody's time so um here for today i'm going to show you the way for you to be able to do it to match everybody's time okay without long communication okay that's one thing and also to allow other people to know when are you going to be free and they can actually book your time, okay? So, and the next thing we talk about, communication with students, okay? When you're not able to see them face-to-face. -face. So, when you want to share some learning material, some assignments, some questions you want to ask. So, here comes Google Classroom can actually help you with instant feedback, okay? Your student will be able to feedback to you and you'll be able to feedback to them both instantly, all right? So, okay, let me see. There is a question here. There are multiple questions in the chat. How can I rep reply them one to one? So, um, question from Ng, okay, Ng Chong Han. So, you will not be able to reply directly to like, the questions, okay? So what you can do is that you can just type in your reply underneath. So just like a normal chat in this um, chat section, all right? Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna show you guys, okay? How can you actually add a task into Google, Google Task and set a reminder in your calendar directly from your Gmail. So first of all, of course, you have to uh, you have to head over to your Gmail. So let me just open up. So what you can do is just type in mail.google.com. All right. So here I have I have an email, okay, submission of midterm result report. Okay, so let me just open up. So here's a message, okay, I need to submit a report by this Friday before 12 p.m. And of course, um, 
in real life, normally what we do or what I used to do is like, I write it on my sticky note. Okay, right now I'm no longer doing that. So what I do is like on your right hand side, okay, can you guys actually see there is a thin bar, okay, which you get to see like three main apps over here. Okay, so when you point over to the third app, you get to see task. Okay, so what you do is that you click on task here while you're still in your email screen. Okay, you just click on add a task. Okay, that's the first way of doing it. So second way of doing it, because you want to add something right away here. Okay, so is that you can do this. You click on this three dot. All right, you get to see add to task. So this is what you can do. Okay, once you click onto it, it's automatically being created under your task. Okay, and this will be added into your calendar as well. But before that, you have to edit the details so that uh, your calendar can actually set a reminder for you. So you can actually click on edit. Okay, is there any details you want to add, any description? So at this moment, I will set a time and the date first. So I'm just going to click on add date and time, click on Friday before 12 p.m. So I'm just gonna set, to be safe, I'm just gonna set it at 11 a.m. All right, so, and I just hit okay. So there we go, you get to see on Friday, 10 of April, 11 a.m., you'll be getting a reminder, submission of midterm result report, okay? And of course, you can add more subtasks as well. So let's say, if, there are more subtasks that you will, you would like to add under this um, task. You can actually click here and add more into it. All right. So once it's done, you just have to click back and there we go. You get to see the email. Okay. And the time and the date and the title. So for this button, okay. So for this button here, when you click on it, it actually refers you back to your original email. So let me just delete this, okay. Just clear it up. All right, so let's say if I go back to my inbox, okay, I would not be able to find back my email that easily, right? So what I have to do is to click here and it will actually direct me right back into my email. Okay. So, so far, do you guys have any question? So, doesn't it record date and time automatically from email to do tasks? Okay. Um, question here. Okay. Sometimes it does, um, it does actually record, it does actually pick up the time from your email. But in this case, because it did not actually pick up the time, so I would have to edit myself. Okay. But everything else, uh, like all the information, it will be automatically picked up from your email. So I got another question, okay. Can this email syncing, okay. Can this email sync with other email providers such as uh, Microsoft Outlook, Yahoo? Okay, uh, for this question, I would say uh, you would have to check uh, with like, let's say Microsoft, you have to check with them whether you are able to sync your uh, Google Calendar to over there, okay. So the next time we open our Gmail, will it, will it be showing us a reminder? Okay, here's the thing. Okay, I'm gonna show you how does it look like in your calendar. So here we have already set April 10, 11. So now what you have to do is to go to your calendar. So just head over to calendar. Okay. 10 of April. 
So there we go. You get to see 11 a.m. submission of midterm result report. Okay. And let's say if you have already get this done before the date, before the expiry date, so you can actually mark, mark it as complete. Okay, and of course, you can also edit more tasks here. So if you are not able to see your task in the calendar, so I would advise you to go over to your left-hand side and make sure task is being checked. Okay, because if you uncheck the task, you will not be able to see any task within your calendar. So you just have to check this and you'll be able to see any tasks that you have set within your calendar. All right. So in order to remember the tasks, you need to go to calendar, right? Okay. So let's say if you want to remember, if you want to get calendar to remind you, my suggestion will be to install the Google Calendar app in your phone and log into it. So every time when you have a task set into your calendar, you will receive a reminder, just like a message on your phone so that you will not forget about it. Even though you like, let's say if you are not using Google Calendar app in your phone, but you have it installed and logged in, you will be getting a reminder. Okay. So the next thing we're going to look at, okay, is basically um, something that we have looked at yesterday, but it's more like an enhanced version for today, okay, which is Google Calendar. So yesterday, for those that we have, who have actually joined my session for yesterday, I believe you have learned how to set an appointment, right? So you just have to select a date and you insert a title and a time and you add a guest that you want to invite and you add a conferencing call link, okay? But today we're gonna to learn something more advanced, which is to allow other people to book your time. Let's say during this MCO period, you'll like to have one-to-one -one session with your student, okay? So what you can do is that you can select a date as usual. So let's say tomorrow, as I can see here tomorrow, I'm actually free. Okay, so I'll just click the date for tomorrow and I'll add a title. So one to one discussion. All right, and this time I will select appointment slots instead. All right, I'll select appointment slot. And I'll need to let my student know, okay, my free period for tomorrow so that they can actually book any time within th that period. So I'll have to set a date and time. So let's say I'm available start from 7.45, okay? Until perhaps 1 p.m. And here, okay guys, you will have to take note. So by default, okay? By default, then the date will be set as one full day, which means it will be set from 8th of April, the date that it was selected, and to the next day, to, to the next day, okay? So what you have to do is to make sure that you make it into the same day, all right? So, so it's from 7.45 in the morning until 1 p.m. So that's the time, that's a period that you'll be free, that you want your student to book your time for one-to-one -one discussion. All right, so, and so for each of the student, how much time do you want to spend with them? So 30 minutes, that's fine, right? So if you want to change the time, you want to shorten the time, you can actually change to 20 minutes or any time, any duration you want, okay? so. From here, you get to select whether it's a single slot, uh, which means um, 7.45 to 1, that's going to be just one whole slot. Or you want to have slots with duration, which within 7.45 to 1, there are a lot of 30 minutes um, slots. So in this case, we're going to set it as slots with duration so that everybody who actually comes first, they can actually book a 30-minute 30 30 session with you. 
okay and of course you have to select a calendar and let's say if for those of you who are actually using google classroom which i'm going to show you guys later so you'll be seeing your class name over here okay you can actually select one of your class okay to put your appointment slot into your class calendar okay so once it's done you just click save so there you go you get to see for tomorrow you get an appointment slot set so the next thing what you have to do is to click on your calendar okay click on your appointment here and go to your appointment page so that you can get the link to share with your student so i'm just gonna hit the link here okay and i'll be able to see for tomorrow this is the session this is the period that i've set with 30 minutes duration for per for each slot over here in between um, 7 45 to 1 p.m so students can actually come in and book my time okay they can just click on it and under description perhaps they can actually put a name or put a topic or put the questions that they have for you and he save to book an appointment with you all right so there you go so this session 9 45 session okay it's already been booked by a student so for those students who actually comes in late so they'll be able to book other session but not this one okay but now how do you share this whole booking page to your student so you can actually send them this link on the top you just copy all right copy and just send it through uh, gmail or you can send it through uh, google classroom so i would actually recommend you guys to actually use google classroom okay so we're gonna head over to google classroom by, go, by heading to classroom.google.com and go into my class okay from here under my stream i'm gonna create an announcement All right, so I've typed, I've typed in a message and I will paste the link over here. Okay, or what you can do is that you can put a link, and just paste it here and add link. So that will look better. Okay, and I'm just gonna hit post. So there you go. This will be how your student can actually see it. So you post it as an announcement. So everybody can now see your message and book your time. Okay. But of course, they will have to log in with the with the university email or um, the Gmail. Okay, to just to book your time. And of course, they can add a comment if they have any questions. So everything, the communication is actually within a single page, within a single platform. It's easy for everybody, easy for you and easy for your students. Okay, let's see if we get any question here. Can we use this function for discussion with students to find a slot for extra class? So um, from here, from Tan, um, could you possibly like elaborate your question? Like, uh, what do you mean by find a slot for extra class? Okay, so let me repeat the whole step. Okay, sometimes some of the people, they might actually get confused. Okay, so when you want to create an appointment slot here, so you hit on the appointment slot okay but you do not invite any guests when you are creating your appointment slot 
all right so you only invite them using the link okay after you have created this appointment page so you go to your appointment page and you copy the link on the top and you send it over to them all right So, okay, let me see if there is any more questions. Okay, there is no more question at the moment. And there's another thing I would like to show to you guys, which I find it truly, truly useful, is that you can actually use the find a time, okay, feature to find like the free time of your guests, of your people that you want to meet with okay so for example i would like to set a department meeting with my colleague with my co-worker so what i do or even with my students so what i do is like we have discussion okay and of course i have to add a guess but before that i'm going to hit more options over here okay and i'm gonna head over to find a time okay you hit on more options you go to find a time so when you go here you can start to add your guess okay i'm gonna add okay some guess into it so let's see let's select a date okay from here, you get to see the schedule of all your guests over here for you to find a free time, so-called free time, so that it matches everybody's schedule. So for example, okay, under Eric, so he's not available in between 10 to 11. So I get to see, okay, he's not available. So I'm aware of this. So other than that, for other people, they are actually free. So what about 11 to 12? So everybody is free over here. Okay, so that I can actually go to the top here and set a time for 12. Okay, and there you go. You get to see at 12 p.m., everybody is actually free. Okay, and what you can do is basically just hit save. All right and the invitation will be sent out to your guests, to the people that you want to meet with. Okay, our friend here uh, is requesting for me to repeat a step on how to find the free time. Okay, let's repeat again. So let me just go over. So, okay, for example, I like to set my discussion with my students okay on next Tuesday on 14th so I'm gonna select the date and this time I'm going to set a title first before I start to set a time or anything I head over to more options okay and I will head over to find a time can you see it? So there is by default, you'll be able to see event details. Okay. And now I'll like you guys to click on find a time. So right now, because I have not invited any guests, so I will not be able to see anyone's um, calendar. So I have to start inviting people. Okay. And I'll be able to see, okay, there are a few people here in my find a time feature here. So what I have to do is to scroll over, okay, throughout the day to see what time are they actually free before I set the time for the meeting. So let's say for now, okay, in between 10 to 11, so two people here, they are not available. So what I can do is that Mm, I, I'm thinking like 12 is actually good for everybody because 12 is free. So I would uncheck the all day because the discussion is not going to last for all day. So I'm going to uncheck this and I will set a time. 
okay? So while you are setting your time, you'll be able to see where does your appointment fall into. So let's say if you select 10, so it will highlight to you, okay, your appointment actually fall under this part, which two people are not available. So I'm going to select 12. So look, everybody's available. All right. So I'm just going to click an hour and hit save. Okay. So once you hit save, you'll be asked whether you want to send invitation email. So in this case, uh, I recommend you to send because so that they receive the invitation, they are aware that you are inviting them for this discussion. Okay. But I will not send for now. And there you go. I have a discussion at 12 p.m. next Tuesday. Okay, fire time is only useful if the guests have updated their calendar. That's right. Okay, so fire time can be very useful if you guys are fully utilized Google Calendar and G Suite for education within the university. So let's say everybody uh, is actually using Google Calendar for setting up their appointments, for setting up their meetings, it will be very useful because that way you'll be able to see who are the people that is actually free that you can actually have discussion with, okay? If there are many people, how will it look like to find time? So just like what um, I've shared earlier, so if there are many people over here, you will get to see on the top here, you will get to see a uh, name of different people. And this is the column for them, for their calendar, okay? So as you can see over here, like under Dan, okay, after five, he will not be available over here. So I'm aware of this. Okay, so I will make sure that I will set the appointment before five. Does it mean they must be using Google Calendar as well in order to see the available time? Um, question from Lo. Yeah, that's correct. So, um, just like I mentioned earlier, if um, you want to make sure that you can actually see the available time from everybody, you will have to make sure that everybody is using Google Calendar as well, or else um, you'll be very hard for you to track the time. Okay. Okay, let's close this. Okay, so is there any other question regarding Google Classroom or else we will actually move over to, sorry, is there any question regarding Google Calendar or else we will actually move to Google Classroom? Maximum how many guests you can actually view at one go. So, um, as many as the guests that you have actually invited, okay? So uh, you'll be able to scroll through the top to see the available time. How about one of the guests reject the invitation. Can we reset the time? Yes, you can actually reset the time and the revision and the invitation and the updated time, it will be sent over to the other guests as well. Okay, so everybody will be actually updated on the time that is being set in Google Calendar. So are there any other reason why we cannot view other people's calendar if they, is it because their calendar is private or something? Okay, there are a few possibilities that they cannot, you cannot view uh, 
you collect data of other people. So the first thing is you guys are actually in different domain. So when you guys are in different domain, you will not be able there will be possibility that you would not be able to assess to this person's uh, calendar because uh, he or she could be setting um, the calendar as private and to be available for their own domain only. But usually, if it's within the same domain, you should be able to view it unless this person actually specifically set it as private, okay? That doesn't allow anyone to view the calendar. But usually by default, the, your calendar should be able to be assessed by the people who are holding the same domain email. Okay. So the next thing, okay, we're going to look at is um, we're going to have like a overview of Google Classroom for better communication. So for those that who have actually been using Google Classroom, I'm pretty sure you have realized the advantages of using Google Classroom, such as you will be able to announce, like set an announcement and announce it to your student, especially like this period of time, you will not be able to see them. You want to make sure the information um, is being delivered to every one of them, okay? Um, accurately so you can actually post it over here so by just typing a message and hit post just like how you post your Facebook status okay it's the same thing and at the same time um, while delivering your messages you can even attach some of the files so such as okay if you have certain video, educational video about your subject that you're teaching or your course, you would like to share it with them. You would like to make sure they utilize the time um, during this period of time and um, to watch something useful. Okay, you can actually share it with them. So by searching directly within your Google Classroom, which is actually linked to YouTube, Okay, you can attach a video and type a message. Hi, students. Okay, so type in a message and attach a video and hit post. So, or sometimes, okay, you would like to, you prefer to actually schedule it to be posted automatically later of the day. So you can actually schedule it for, uh, the announcement to be posted later on to other, in other days or on the same day, but different time. Okay, once you hit post, Uh, and, uh... Okay, are you guys able to hear me now? Okay, cool. Yeah, so we were talking about like one of the advantage of using Google Classroom that is that you'll be able to announce the message over here and it stays there, okay, without having any other like messages that will actually mess up your your information that you want to deliver it to the students. So this is one thing. And another thing, if you go into your classwork here, you'll be able to share your content of different subjects, okay, or even assign your assignment um, to the student. So for those that who have actually joined my session yesterday, remember that we talk about uh, recording your session, your hangout session, okay? So after it's being recorded, you can actually attach it here as part of the, as part of the learning material. So what you can do is that you go to your Google Drive, 
and look for that particular video that was recorded yesterday and hit add okay into your class material and say recorded session okay 6th of april and you get a set a copy virtual class and hit post okay and there you go so your recorded session will be actually fall under the virtual class so student will be able to refer to refer back to your recorded session so just in case they actually missed it out so they missed out part of your class or they actually had bad internet connection they couldn't actually join your session just like what we are doing now okay you could actually record a session and attach it under your google classroom material so student i'm pretty sure like most of the students they have a, a smartphone okay so they'll be able to go into the google classroom app and look at the video anytime as long as they have connection they have internet connection especially now um during this period of time all telcos they are offering like uh, one gigabyte of free data so they should not have any issues of assessing to your video right okay let me see i noticed some question popping up the recording is automatically being saved in your Google Drive. That's right, from Rashida, the question. Okay, um, when you record your Hangout session, just like, for example, right now, this session webinar is being recorded and you'll be shared with you guys after this through our social media, okay? And a link uh, will be shared with you as well. Can students edit anything that we have posted under classwork from Julina? No, the question, the answer is no. So whatever that you have actually posted in your classroom, student will not be able to edit your post. Okay, that's very important. And of course, um, there will be ways for you to limit uh, the things that student can actually do in a Google Classroom as well. I'm pretty sure some of the lecturers, uh, you might not actually want your student to post something on the Google Classroom, okay? You'll want them to use Google Classroom for interaction, for leaving a comment, leaving a question, but you do not want them to post anything. So what you can do here is that you can head over to your settings, okay? And you just scroll down under general, under your stream, you get to see my setting is being set as students can can only comment. So which means they would not be able to post anything. And of course, if you don't mind, you think that, okay, it's fine for my student to actually share any information on, the, on their Google Classroom um, stream, okay, you can actually set it as students can post and comment. So that way student will be able to post at the same time they can leave a comment um, under anyone's post, okay? And of course, sometimes some of the lecturers, some of the teachers, you guys prefer like uh, only you can post and comment. So student, all they have to do is just to refer to your work, to, to, to do the assignment, to submit their work. So there is a setting for you as well, okay? So as you can see, it's actually quite flexible for different type of user here. Okay, let's see. How to start and create a new subject in Google Class, in Google Classroom from Enhui, okay? So that's a very good question. So I'm assuming that you are actually a pretty new user, okay, here. So let me just show you a very quick one on how to create a new class for you. So when you log into your Google Classroom, okay, this will be your class if you are the current user. If you have not used Google Classroom before, you will not be able to see any classes here. So you should head over to the top right and hit on the plus button and hit create class. So that way you'll be able to create a new class. All right, so 
that you might be noticed there is a join class here. So how do you use this? So join class is usually can be useful when you want to join into a, uh, a class that is already existed. Okay. So for example, I would like my student to join into my class instead of me adding them into my class. I can actually head over to my stream and under class code, I can display this on my screen. So they'll be able to copy this screen and join into my class. Okay. What's the difference in between assignment and quiz assignment? Okay, that's a good question as well. So if you head over to classwork and you go into create, you'll be noticing like assignment and quiz assignment. So when you select quiz assignment, that will be a quiz, okay? Which you'll be using Google Form, which we'll be learning on Thursday to create a quiz for your student, okay? For assignment, they will be able to submit um, any form of documentation or any form of work such as Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, or even um, documentation or work in other format. Okay, for quiz, they will only be able to submit a Google form. Okay. Let's see. How to get the students to share a material that can be seen by all students. So in this case, uh, I would say the student can actually share it as a post. So everybody within the classroom can actually see it. Okay. How do I make sure the student don't share their answer with each other when I assign them something? Okay, this is a very good question as well. So when you're sharing uh, when you're assigning an assignment to your student, so let's assuming that you are attaching like a Google Doc, okay, into your assignment post. So there is a setting here. So you'll be able to make a copy for each student, okay? So each of each, every student here, they'll be getting their own individual copy of the work. So they'll be able to submit the work here uh, with their own copy only. So that's what you can control within Google Classroom. Of course, uh, whatever that's happening at the back end, you will not be able to control, uh, like such as they could be messaging each other. I think that will be something out of the control, right? Can we reuse the material content from the previous SEM class into a new class? Okay, of course you can. So what you can do, okay, is that because everything that you attach here, you'll be safe under your um, Google Drive, okay? So what you can do is that you can reuse, okay? You can reuse your uh, classwork. Let's see. So from Enghu, okay, why I cannot find create option? So, um, so the reason why you cannot find a create option, uh, what I can think of is that possibly you are using a Gmail account, but not um, a Google email that is belongs to the Google domain. So such as, for example, okay, uh, you can actually use uh, an email, for example, at itrain.com.my, which is under Google domain, to to have this create function, but it's not available under personal Gmail email. Okay.
for quiz, is there any way to automatically mark or grade short answer question? For quiz, yes. So if you are setting it under your Google form, which uh, we're going to be looking at it on Thursday, you'll be able to set some question, sorry, set some um, answer, some default answer for short, short answer question um, for it to be automatically marked. Okay. Can anybody join the class as long as they have the class code? Um, the, the answer is yes and no. So let's say if you are talking about people with your university email, that they're using the email that under your same domain, okay, they'll be able to join into your class if they have the class code. So for somebody um, who is actually outside your university with the personal Gmail or a Gmail account from different domain, they would not be able to join into your class, okay? Can we prepare random real-time quizzes? Um, yes, but that's gonna be via uh, Google Forms. So uh, Nora Misa here just mentioned Unhu. I think you need to sign as teacher, not as student. Okay, that's right. So sometimes if you actually log in as a student, that could be the problem as well. Okay, you will not be able to create a class. Okay, because students would not be allowed to create a class. Only teachers, teachers are actually allowed to create a class. So question from Ho, how do you send a Google Calendar reminder to everyone in the class? Okay. So here's a question regarding Google Calendar reminder. Okay. I'm assuming that you are talking about reminder of an appointment. So you do not have to resend the reminder. You do not have to send it um, manually. So what you can do is that when you are setting up your appointment, okay, let's assuming that you are in the option, you can actually add notifications here. So which means you can preset the notification. So by default, it should be 10 minutes before your appointment. So you can, of course, you can add more notification. Let's say 30 minutes. And I could actually add one day in advance. So, so they'll be able to receive one notification one day in advance and another notification 30 minutes in advance and another one 10 minutes in advance and hit save and people will be getting their notification. Okay. Oh, wow, a lot of questions here. Um, let's see. So when we create a new class, can we copy all content from previous cl class, posts, assignment, quizzes? Okay, uh, the answer will be you can actually copy certain things that, and there are the certain things that you will not be able to copy. So for example, okay, when I go to classwork here, I get to see reuse posts over here. So what I can do is that because I want to reuse something from the previous class, so I will hit on reuse posts, okay? And I'll be able to see there are things over here that I want to reuse. So I can just select one and I hit review, reuse, okay? So once I hit on reuse, I'll be able to reset all the description, the title, and even edit the content, edit more. And I can select different class that I want to assign to. So not just focusing on one class, but I can actually assign to different other classes as well. And I can edit the topic and I can repost it again. Of course, you will have to do it one by one, post by post, okay?
can students update their submission after deadline? Yes, the student can actually update the submission after deadline. The feedback from Link says I've responded, but I think that was yesterday. Um, I guess. Okay, okay, Liz has already feedback to you guys. So notification is not just for the owner, but for all of the class without having to add addresses one by one. Okay, for notification under calendar, okay, you will have to uh, you have to add in like a class email into your calendar, okay, so that everybody can receive the same notification. How do we terminate a class without deleting the material that we have prepared? So what you can do is that you can go to classes here and you hit on archive, okay? So once you hit on archive, you'll be go, you'll be actually put under your archive classes. Okay, I do not have any archive here. Oops, I think I got drop out, so. Okay, just wondering if there is any more question from you guys. I guess um, our class is actually coming to the end for today. So if you guys would like to know more um, about uh, juicy for Education, you can actually feel free to contact our team um, and leave us a feedback so that uh, we know um, what are the things that you would like to learn in the future and what are the other topics that you'll be interested in um, so that we can create more webinars for you guys. So for more, for more information and questions, please feel free to contact us uh, after this, okay? And for now, I will pass it back to Liz uh, to see, uh, Liz, do you have anything else that you would like to say? You'd like to share? But uh, you just fill out it for today. So rate it for today's evaluation. 
I will quickly. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. We hope to see you again on this coming Thursday. And meanwhile, if you have any question, please feel free to contact us and our team. Okay. And for those who are wondering if uh, we'll be sure if you'll be able to access back to this session, not to worry, it's being recorded and we will share it with you guys after this. Okay. And for now, um, please uh, let us know what are the things that you would like to learn in the future and do give us some feedback and uh, if you need, if you want to know more about us, please feel free to log on to www.itrain.com.my or contact us at info at itrain.com.my. Thank you, everyone. All right, stay safe and see you soon. Bye. -bye.